So let's talk about Jay Hobson at Southern Miss and Tristan Lay at LSU and all that's coming up after the bumper. Don't be cornering me. Hold up. Time. You got to help me with that, that corner sh**. <laughs> What's up, kinfolk? It's RJ Young. I am not on a step mill. Consider hitting the like and subscribe button because I upload a video every single day. It's always college football related, sports related. We have a good time and we live stream on Mondays and Wednesdays. For those of you that joined earlier today with me and my best friend Ron, I appreciate it. We covered a lot of topics, but even as we were talking, some news broke and there were a couple of topics that we didn't have time to get to. Try to keep the live streams to about an hour, right? Went a little bit longer, so forth, so on. But Jay Hobson didn't get fired. He resigned, or at least that's the, what the language says, from the head coach job at Southern Miss, where he took him to three bowl games in four years, but never won more than seven games in a single season. And it was time for him to go, right? This is interesting because my mother graduated from the university, or I should say from Southern Miss, University of Southern Mississippi. And I grew up in Hattiesburg, right? My earliest childhood memories are in Hattiesburg. I grew up at a time when Brett Favre was becoming quarterback at USM, and Patrick Sertain was probably the best player to ever come out of USM. And at a time when USM was good, Right? All the way up until, you know, Larry Fedora in 2011 when they went like 12-2 and two and finished number 20 in the country. And then the wheels came off, right? First with Tyrone Nix who goes 0-12. Then with Todd Munkin who goes 1-11. and And that right now feels like a dark horse to be the guy that takes over for the Golden Eagles once again because he was there. And it feels like Bill Clark might look in his direction because he was looking in his direction when he was the football player or I should say athletic director at UAB. But for Hobson, this is the end of a tumultuous two years at Southern Miss because many of you will know that he tried to hire Art Bryles to be his offensive coordinator. This is a year in which he has two new coordinators, and it ain't working. But the reason that he got in trouble is because he did not inform his bosses that he wanted to hire Art Bryles as the offensive coordinator, and that got Nick's because Art Bryles is the head coach at Baylor at a time when Baylor went, was a part of one of the largest and worst sexual assault scandals in modern history. It's like Penn State, Baylor. And while many would be right to say that Art Bryles was made into a scapegoat, Art Bryles also is the head coach, and that's what that means, right? Now, add to this, Hobson just lost to South Alabama in Hattiesburg with a returning starting quarterback in Jack Abraham. Now, he leaves the job a couple year, or four years after he took the job as the head coach at Alcorn State, where he had won a SWAC title, and they were pretty good. We'll see what happens with Jay Hobson, but I thought that was just a weird hire to begin with, and I think they're going to try to go back to the well with a known coordinator in the Group 5 or in even the Power 5, because if Munkin actually started to look at this job, I would take him. If Larry Fedora started looking at this job, I would take him as well. I don't know what is next for Southern Miss. I do know that they were able to get a football game in, though. And that's more than we could say for Rice. Rice has postponed games that were supposed to start on October 3rd and October 17th. They don't know if they're going to start their season on October 24th. They haven't even started practice yet. This is also the school where they started classes where it costs $49,000 a year by saying to students, bring your own chair because we're going to have outdoor classes because of the COVID. Stick Rice in rice like this season and right now as i am doing this upload we're getting ready to watch byu versus navy and brigham young university's football season was in the crapper until they were able to cobble together something like a schedule because they had two games against big 10 opponents they had pac-12 on the schedule they had mountain west on the schedule all those games went up in smoke because the big 10 pac-12 and yes the mountain west all postponed their seasons or flat out just canceled them so now they get to start against Navy in Annapolis, but because Annapolis is, well, I should say because the Naval Academy is located in Maryland on state ground, they cannot have fans in the stands, so it's going to be empty as the midshipmen take on the Cougs. It's just a wild part of the season. We also saw really interesting start to the college football weekend with that Thursday and those games, but even before that with Austin Peay and Central Arkansas, where you can see the way that the country is dealing with covid through football. Alabama, they're going to go around about life. In New York, they were only able to have those cadets in the stands at Mikey Stadium 
because it's on federal land. Otherwise, nobody gets to go to games in the state of New York. Same thing in Maryland. And now we're also dealing with rising numbers, even still, in Texas, in Arizona, in California, and in Louisiana. Louisiana is also where they had a LSU summit of sorts, Tiger meetup, Tiger whatever you want to call it. They, like Georgia, like Oklahoma, let their quarterbacks lead an unofficial visit of sorts, right? Now, it's dead period, and you can do whatever you want in as far as going to a university. If you invite a bunch of your friends to go along and just take a look around, that's on you. According to NCAA rules, during a dead period, coaches cannot communicate with prospects except through written messages and by phone. So Garrett Nussmeyer and his family put together what they thought was a list of commits and a list of recruits that they would like to see, you know, join them in Baton Rouge for a weekend. And Nussmeyer's mom rented out Airbnb. They invite Christian Lay and his family down from Fairfax, along with a number of other commits and prospects, and they had themselves a good time in Baton Rouge. This feels like it's sewing up Tristan Lay to LSU because as much as he was a part of the Sooner Summit, he was also part of LSU's deal. And he'd been an LSU lean before going to Baton Rouge yet again. Now that he's able to get down there with a quarterback that again likes him and getting to see what that atmosphere is like, and Louisiana is not shut down in the way that, say, Virginia is, I'm interested to see if and when and how he pulls the trigger on where he chooses to commit because if you're going to hedge bets here, you got to put LSU up front, right? Which would let LSU really challenge for the number one recruiting class in the 2021 cycle behind Alabama and, of course, Ohio State. They also get a leg up here because Alabama and LSU are playing football. Now, LSU is really an interesting story right now because we have not seen this kind of turnover from a national title team probably ever. Because you do have so many upperclassmen that either choose to declare for the draft or are just graduating from a national championship team. That's the way that it works. But in the age of the pandemic, when you had guys like Jamar Chase, Tyler Shelvin, and Kerry Vincent all opt out, that also is going to hurt you tremendously. And you're getting in a new quarterback, and I haven't brought this up enough, a new passing game coordinator. Like Steve Ensminger being the offensive coordinator is one thing. Scott Linehan also is going to have to be learning this offense and with musical chairs on most of the positions, right? Now, Ensminger's going to help him with that. And there's a lot of people that are buying stock into Miles Brennan. I need to see Miles Brennan work before I'm going to buy any kind of stock in him, but that's before we talk about Bo Pelini moving to a 4-3. I think that if LSU puts together anything like a decent season, count Tristan Lay, count this great recruiting class, count it as a win for LSU in this season of mulligans. But if Alabama's able to put together an undefeated season at a time when Ohio State can't play football, and if Oklahoma struggles, that's all she wrote, right? Because I really think that this is shifting. I think this is becoming more about LSU and less about everybody else. But you would love to see LSU do some things on a football field to seal that in. Sounds like they're making good headway with a solid class that is very much together and very much following their leader in Garrett Nussmeyer. All right, that's it for me. Doses.